if anyone stopped for five minutes, like you were literally trading five minutes sleep for someone's life. Like that's how fast everything was happening. Like Sea Spray, he lost 37 pounds in 10 days. He just would not stop. And so I made a decision that I was going to go get Aziz, his wife and six kids. And, and in that decision, I, I knew that the people I had to call on would be veterans that I trust from the special operations community that had a couple, and there's a couple of key criteria I was looking for. Mature guys who already had their combat lust sewn and, and cared about actually going and getting Aziz out and not going there and, and getting in a fight with the Taliban. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was super important to me. Uh, the first person that I called was, you know, you know, he recently came on a show was Tim Kennedy and, uh, you know, and Tim, I've known Tim for a long time. A lot of people don't know Tim's like a, not just a green beret, ASO level three guy has done clan log stuff before very mature human being, very mature, uh, combat experience. Tim, everybody thinks Tim like is a big braggadocious guy. Tim does not brag because if Tim bragged, you would probably wouldn't believe half the stories of some of the stuff he's done. He's, he's, he's got some amazing like experience in, in combat. And, uh, man, he just, I remember calling him and, and he had, he's, I knew like he was getting asked to be like some jobs with Afghanistan and he was turning stuff down cause he has so many businesses he runs and he's busy. And when I told him I, I'm going to get disease and his wife and family, he was like, I'm in, where do you need me to be? Let's go get him right away. No questions asked. Um, and we ended up putting a team together, probably about 12, 12 guys initially. It built a little over time. I don't know exactly how many at that time. Uh, and and uh, Sarah Verardo, contact Sarah Verardo. Uh, of the, uh, she runs the Independence Fund. Her husband was a catastrophically wounded uh, guy from Afghanistan. She knows a lot of people in D.C. Started putting this plan together. Go we'll get Aziz, his wife, and six kids. And, and as we're putting it together, uh, one of the guys uh, brought up the fact that there was these 3,000 orphans that were being left behind. And that was kind of a game changer of information because uh, everybody was fleeing. You know, people were surviving uh, because they, that thing was happening faster and faster. And, uh, and 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 we knew at that moment that we had to do more than help just as easy as family. Uh, I think everybody that was involved in this thing was was uh, people of faith. And so we all felt like God really burdened our hearts to, to help as many people as we could. And, uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's why we originally called it, you know, Mighty Oaks started the Save Our Allies Coalition, which ultimately we, we used the Save Our Allies Coalition from Mighty Oaks and found it, Save Our Allies as its own, own entity. But it started as that in the, in the operation force that we call, we called the Task Force 68 from Isaiah 68, here, here am I, send me. And that's why we called it that because we all felt God just burning our hearts to, to go help those people. And we made a decision like, hey, let's just lean in and see what happens. Let's help Aziz, his wife and six kids, but as many Americans, as many interpreters, their families, women, children, Christians, every person. Let's see how many people we could, we could help. And so the first thing was see, can we get on H. Kaya, Hamid Karzai International Airport and, and built to go outside the wire and rescue people? Because right now we know that the White House took the NEO operation, non-combatant evacuation operation, away from the DOD and gave it to the State Department, which, were, by the way, that should never have happened. If you want to know why a lot of problems happen, it's because of that, because now the, the State Department treats H. Kaya like an embassy uh, and the military is used as a protective force of the, of the, of the embassy or the airport. And, and, the, and then the outer perimeter is given to the Taliban. Well, when the Taliban was given the outer perimeter, anybody that knows combat knows that whoever controls the outer ground space controls in, in, an access to that ground space. And so now you get, they have the White House telling Americans, if you want to leave, go to the airport. Well, you got some 21-year-old girl who went there to teach English or be a humanitarian aid worker or be an evangelist, uh, and, and she's going to show her blue passport to the Taliban who's executing people in the streets because that's what was happening. Of course not, right? So so, uh, so that's, that's the environment. And then and the military is not being allowed to go outside the wire to go rescue their own civilians. And so how are they going to allow us? It's an impossibility. Uh, so the reason I say that is this, uh, and, and I appreciate you saying that, you know, about not putting the, the onus on me about doing this. Like we, we felt that burden and we were obedient to lean forward. But what happened in rescuing Aziz's wife and six kids and, and 17,000 other people, I, I want to make sure everybody that ever hears me talk about this knows this. Like I am not smart enough capable enough to pull that off. Logistically is impossibility. All the, there was so many obstacles that made this thing impossible. And, and the only thing I could point to when people ask, how did we do it? It was a modern day 
a miracle from God. God orchestrated something that, that was completely impossible, starting with us being able to have access to the airport. So many, so many amazing veterans and, and organizations wanted to move people, and, they, and a lot of people did a lot of great job, great jobs doing that. But for some reason, uh, we were the only ones that got access to get on the airport and go outside. And the reason why is because uh, we we had got permission from from the Joint Chiefs Office to do that. And again, I don't know how you would think. Why would they not allow the military to do it? Why would they allow us to do it? Uh, maybe Sarah Verrero has pictures of General Milley in high heels. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know She's why. She's probably not the only one. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't know why, but we got we got the permission to be able to do that. And, uh, and you know, Sean Gabler and and, uh, and Sea Spray uh, on the ground, able to get our own air airstrip to be able to move people. Uh, all this stuff was happening at one time. But now that like, we have permission to do this, right? And, and, and not only that, but, 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 but vet people, manifest people through those protocols. Uh, now we have to move people who don't have visas outside of across the other country's border. That's illegal, right? I get people in the airport. Once they get to the airport, what good is it? The US government's going to be there for a little while, right? Eventually they can leave and those people that got inside the airport will be gone. We have to be able to move them out. And without visas, I can't move them. A lot of people gave us a lot of crap in the beginning because everybody's arm track quarterback. You guys are moving people. Who are you bring into the states? Like we, we don't even know who these people are. First of all, I'm not the State Department. I don't have any authority to bring anybody to the United States. I could get somebody out another country, but I don't have any authority. The state only the State Department could do that. So, secondly, we vetted more people than the U.S. government did. So the people we were moving were vetted. Uh, the people that are going on those planes that you, you, the DOD are moving, no fault to the troops fault to the White House and State Department, they were not vetted. So we were moving people that we were vetting. We had a process to do it. And uh, and, and we, had, we were doing our due diligence, but now we have to move them across border. How do you do that? We need to be able to find another country. The only place you can move people across border without a visa is Laredo, Texas. And uh, <laughs> But in the real world, you have to have you have to follow rules and laws. And so so we, uh, we, we contacted the UAE, the country of the UAE. We had a connection there. We had two connections, actually, but Joe Robert, who's a recon Marine that I knew, uh, and then Sean Gabler had another backdoor connection. Joe Robert uh, grew up with the Roth family, with the Prince, and, uh, and, and we was able to secure me a phone call. I got a phone call. Uh, got a name, uh, I'm Santa Six, because his name's Santa Six. Dan, Dan O was on a phone call. Joe Robert was on a phone call. Uh, we had, uh, I think, Sean Gabler was on the phone call. We had a couple of senators and congressmen that I got on for credibility, and we we got on the phone with the UAE and 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 the uh, officials there and the royal family and presented the plan. And they listened. And at the end, they said, "Not only will we support you to bring them here and give you a humanitarian center, we're going to give you a C-17 plane and pilots. Uh, let's let's help." You've got to be shitting me. Yeah. That that plane was a UAE plane. The the. The main plane that we had was UA two, and we got two, and then it, and so now we have, we have ability to go rescue people. We have a place to bring them. We have aircraft to do it, but we knew the problem was going to be bigger, and so we needed. We this is not going to cost thousands of dollars. It costs millions of dollars uh, to be able to pull something like this off. We don't have time to ramp up for this. It's happening like now, and uh, and 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 I'm going to need more aircraft. And those aircraft, by the way, are like five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollars a flight. Uh, so uh, I'm like. Now, how do I solve this problem? And all this happened in three days, by the way. I get a random call from someone I've known for a while, Glenn Beck. He had heard I, he had heard I was getting involved. And so Glenn called me and, and Glenn, Glenn said, Chad, I want to do something. I didn't know what to do. I just felt like it was wrong, what was happening. I got into radio to raise money. I thought I'd raise a few thousand dollars. He's like, I already had $21 million come in. Like, what do I do with it? Ultimately, he had over $40 million come in. And I said, we need to start chartering planes. And so Mercury One's his organization. They partnered with us. Uh, at Mighty Oaks, they've been a great partner at Mighty Oaks, and uh, a guy named Rudy Atala started working aircraft for us, and uh, and so that was a lot of a lot of the other NGOs and, and veterans that were working, they were getting people in aircraft, were all in those aircrafts, like coordinating through us to get on those aircraft, and so, I, man, everything happened so fast, but when I say like a series of miracles happened, none of those things independently are possible, and they all had to happen in the right sequence, and that allowed us the ability to be able to logistically pull this off. And we got in the UAE, uh, and we're in the UAE, uh, in Abu Dhabi, at the Humanitarian Center, running operations. We have a, a team back in Washington, D.C., taking people that are sending information 
app people are coming in, help us get out. Veterans are hearing about it. So veterans are sending their interpreters. We're telling them, hey, this is the paperwork we need. And they were getting us the right paperwork on the ground. We we're doing the bona fides and making sure there's the right people. Our ground team on the ground at H. Kaya, uh, Sean Gabler, Tim Kennedy, Dave Johnson, C. Spray on the ground. Uh, you know, Sean, C. Spray and Sean Gabler are like the uh, the main like heroes of this thing. They're on the ground going outside the wire. Like literally, like from the guys in Abu Dhabi to the ground force to the guys. If anyone stopped for five minutes, like you were literally trading five minutes sleep for someone's life. Like that's how fast everything was happening. Like sea spray, he lost 37 pounds in 10 days. He just would not stop. Uh, and, you know, talking about a guy like, you know, I, I told you a little bit yesterday, I can't say in details, but traded his career that he worked his whole life for to stay on the ground and help those pe people who didn't know himself. Like the level of desperation, like people seeing airplanes, people falling off airplanes. The best description I have is, uh, is imagine a thousand a hundred thousand people swarming a gate to get in that kind of chaos women get trampled to death uh not everybody was you know not all afghans are good right not all not all everybody's anywhere is good so you got the men pushing to the front it's just chaos taliban are in there shooting people uh it, it's total chaos and, and women are so desperate that their babies won't grow up to be sex slaves as little girls or, or Taliban as little boys that they take their baby, kiss it goodbye, knowing they're never going to see it again, put it in a crowd of, of 10,000 people, crowd surf it like a beach ball to the wall, and then someone grabs that baby and throws it as hard and as high as they can, hoping a U.S. service member catches it on the other side of that wall. What they didn't know was on the other side of that wire was six feet high and about 20 feet deep of Constantino wire, razor wire. My buddy Joe counted six babies that were bled to death in that wire. Like That was the level of like desperation on the ground there. And, and we just kept kept pushing uh, to get as many people as we could. And then at day 10, we didn't realize at the time we had got 12,000 people out by day 10. And uh, in a suicide bomber hit Abbey Gate, 13 of our service members were killed. And, uh, and the U.S. military was forced to weld the gate shut and the ground evacuations there were over. Um, I remember when that, when that happened, Tim was, Tim was just at that... Tim and Seaspray were just at the Abbey Gate, and we thought, you know, and then we got a uh, thumbs up. They were good. Uh, but at that time, we, you know, when that ends at, at H. Kaya, I thought, man, like, um, the U.S. military is being forced to leave, but, hey, we don't have to. And, and my big thing at that time, you know, because Aziz is already out, his wife and kids are, are out, but at that time, like, the the White House is saying there's there's a hundred Americans left out there, and I knew anybody on the ground knew there was thousands of Americans still out there. In fact, the White House before had said there was sixteen thousand Americans there, which they were guesstimating because they don't register. No one registers with the State Department. They were saying sixteen thousand, but we got six thousand out. So I'm not, I'm not that great at math, but six thousand minus sixteen thousand isn't a hundred. And but the truth is, even if there were ten thousand or a hundred, you don't leave one American behind. Like ever, anywhere, like. This America does. Yeah, not me. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.